uh, everybody getting here so we can start the discussion. I've been informed by my Democratic colleagues that Senator Feinstein will be the only Democrat here. Under our rules, uh, we're not supposed to do business unless we get seven uh, from the majority and two from the minority. And uh, so what we'll do is we'll uh, take this up Thursday next week. I uh, will make a motion to change the rules, deem this bill held over, and we're going to vote. We're going to vote on this bill unless we can find some solution to this problem. For a month, I've been working with my Democratic colleagues to find a way forward. I've noticed this bill, and I withdrew it from being marked up because I'm not looking for a political solution. I'm looking for a real solution. And Senator Feinstein has been terrific. Plan Columbia, count me in for investing in Central America only if we change our laws and modify Flores. All of us had a chance to go to the border. Many of you chose to go. What have I learned from my visit? If we do not change the asylum process, they will keep coming endlessly from Central America and other places, and 20 days is not enough to adjudicate the claims of a minor child when they're associated with other family members. I don't want families separated, but I don't want them to re be released either. 52,000 people have been released in the Rio Grande sector alone because they don't have enough capacity to hold them for adjudication. The Border Patrol tells me they need closer to 50 days than 20. The goal is to focus on family claims uh, like a laser, have residential settings to detain the family in humane conditions. If they win their case, they can stay. If they don't, they go back. I don't want to separate families, but I don't want to release them. If we don't modify Flores, we're going to have half of Central America coming to the United States. As to the asylum process, it is being abused. If you put one foot on U.S. soil and you ask for asylum, your hearing's two or three years down the road. We don't have the capability to hold you. Ninety percent of the people don't show up. We need a timeout when it comes to asylum. Smugglers and traffickers are marketing this all over the world. They're advertising in the Mideast for $30,000. We'll bring you to Central America. Then you get into a smuggling network that comes to the border, and they're trying to find the first Border Patrol agent they can find. The wall will not fix this problem. They're trying to get caught. All of you who have been down at the border know what it's like. They know that the, you know that the laws are being abused and they need to be changed. And I am willing to address the underlying problem in Central America, but I cannot do that until we fix our laws to stop the flow. And I regret we are where we are. Uh, there's some problems that will get better over time. This is not one of them. There's some things in this country that can survive political breakdown. This is not one of them. This is not a crisis at the border. This is a disaster. It's just a matter of time, so some terrorist figures out this is the easiest way ever to get into the United States. 30% of the family units are not real families. There's a whole network out there using children, actually renting them, to come to America and they get recycled. This is hell on earth for the children. The conditions at the border upset me. I'd like to make them better, but those who are enforcing our laws tell us that the laws are broken and they cannot do their job unless we do our job. So next Thursday, this committee is going to do our job. If between now and next Thursday, Thursday, we can have a breakthrough, some serious negotiations, I'm not trying to mark up a bill to make a political point. I'm trying to fix a problem. So, Senator Feinstein, you have a great record of working across the aisle, particularly on immigration. Your point about Central America is well taken. I'm the first to acknowledge if you don't invest in Central America, we really can never solve this problem. But all the money in the world invested in Central America will not stop the flow as long as you can get into the country the way you can today. So to my colleagues on this committee. Do I get to respond? Yes, ma'am. To my colleagues on this committee, we'll work where we can, but we're going to do things that need to be done. Somebody needs to act to give the relief to the Border Patrol they need to put the smugglers out of business. We're going to take a leadership role here. Whether anybody else works with us, 
I can't promise you that, but I can promise you that we're going to try to solve this problem. Senator Feinstein. Mr. Chairman, um, I appreciate the opportunity to say a few words. Um, we're at an impasse, no question. There are very strong feelings on this side. We believe that the solution on the immigration issue can and should be addressed in a bipartisan manner. We have done that before. The year was 2013. The Senate passed comprehensive legislation <clears throat> to reform our entire immigration system. That bill passed on a vote of 68 to 32, including three Judiciary Committee Republicans. As Acting Secretary McAleenan testified before us last month, quote, we'd be a lot more secure along the border if that bill had become law. Unfortunately, and this is the problem, the bill that's on the agenda today isn't bipartisan like the prior bill. And I think that's a real signal because it ain't gonna happen if it's not. This bill is focused almost exclusively on repealing protections for children and effectively eliminating asylum for Central America. We're not gonna do that. This bill eliminates the Flores Agreement, which is the only way government has been required to ensure facilities that hold children that can maintain minimum standards. Clean drinking water, safe and sanitary conditions, that's not too much. Not only did this bill eliminate that mandate, it gives DHS the sole discretion, unreviewable by any judge, to determine the detention conditions for children. Given what has been documented at the border, it's clear to me that DHS should not be the agency in charge of setting humane standards for detention. This bill also gives the federal government the authority to preempt state child care licensing requirements and even ignore state family court orders. We're not gonna do that. Giving DHS such broad power, we believe will have a devastating impact on children. As the inspector, <coughs> leave it. As the inspector general um, stated uh, last month, DHS has been unable to meet the current standards for care of children. The bill contains policy changes that would send unaccompanied children back to violent situations, abused children back to abusive parents, and it would prevent people in the United States from applying for asylum. It would close the door to people fleeing persecution. It's a big deal. If enacted, it would be a significant setback for children and families seeking asylum, and we're just not gonna let it happen. This should indicate how strongly we feel on this side. We are at an impasse. We ask that we follow what our tradition has been, Mr. Chairman, and that's a bipartisan bill. And every time we have worked a bipartisan, you know this, mm -hmm. that we have sat down, we have been able to work it out and come up with a positive solution, right? Without a doubt, and I can tell you that the Gang of Eight bill would not fix this problem. <clears throat> this is a new problem. The asylum uh, process is being abused. The Flores decision is irrational, imposed by a district court judge with absolutely no knowledge of what it takes to actually process a claim. So what we're trying to do is modify Flores, not to be indefinite detention, but to give the people a chance to adjudicate a family claim so they don't have to release them or separate them. The asylum process is being massively abused, and we need to fix this problem, and I'm willing to do more, but if you don't fix this problem, the money is going to be wasted. So I've had nobody on the other side willing to talk to me about fixing this problem. Can I make a suggestion? Yes, ma'am. That you put together a bi small bipartisan group of us, mm -hmm. as was done before, and let us sit down and work this out. Well, yes, ma'am, and I will just, don't want to mislead you, I'll be willing to talk to Central American ambassadors, and I just want the committee to know somebody's got to act. I've delayed this for a month. 
I went to the border. We've had a hearing. We know what we need to do. If we can't do it, somebody's going to lead around here. Somebody's going to take the bull by the horns to change our laws. It will be this committee. If it's a partisan vote, it's a partisan vote. But I want the people on the border to know somebody's listening to you up here. And I want the country to know that there is a solution. And we just need to embrace that solution. And you want to make it bigger than this bill? Count me in. But this bill has to pass in some form or it never stops. We will uh, recess the committee, and I'll see you Thursday.